Hello, welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Uh, today is April 18th, and this is the EU US edition. Uh, and uh, right now we have myself, Kevin Martins, and Bruno Varashton joining us for the meeting. Uh, if anyone else joins in, we'll welcome them as always. For the agenda, we have the LTS release from this week, uh, the weekly release from this week, uh, the next LTS baseline discussion, uh, Google Summer of Code application period blog post and some notes on where things are at with that. Some notes on the version docs project. Uh, update for the contributor spotlight. Um, just some notes on the technical review validation from uh, the Jenkins.io pull requests. Uh, we'll review the documenting pipeline libraries topic that uh, we've been discussing the last couple of weeks. Uh, CDCon just wrapped up in Seattle. so. Uh, I'm, we'll just touch on that real quickly. Uh, and then a topic that I wanted to start talking about now, uh, just to get the ball rolling, uh, the deprecation of Blue Ocean and what documentation tasks that's going to involve. Uh, any other topics that you want to include here, Bruno, or does that cover everything you had you might have on mind? Yeah, thank you. Nothing new from my side. Cool. Okay. Uh, so then we'll get started and we'll start with the LTS this week. So uh, 2.440.3 was released on Wednesday, the 17th. Thanks again to Chris Dern for being the release lead for this. Uh, there were a couple of questions about the RC and initial communication with the release candidate, but everything was resolved. Uh, there was another question about one of the backports, but that was also taken care of and resolved accordingly. Um, so the changelog was merged, the LT, the release went smoothly, and everything looks good to go, look, looks good from uh, the build and everything else uh, after the fact. So um, thanks to the Infra team and everyone else for their work on that and for all the work done in getting the release uh, live. Uh, we also had weekly 2.454 built and delivered this week. Uh, Bruno, you raised your hand. Sorry. Yeah, on. sorry. It's also linked to the weekly one and the 429 or something error that uh, Docker gives us. Uh, there is a work in progress done by Hervé and I on the controller and agent images so that we use fewer layers uh, when we are building the images. So there are at least five or six pull requests at that time in the Docker and uh, Docker agent and Docker SSH agent repositories. And I don't know if they will be merged by next weekly. I hope so. Um, but then when they will be merged, we should see a decrease in the number of layers we are uh, pulling from the Docker Hub and the number of layers we are pushing to Docker Hub. So we'll hope that will help us with getting rid of that 429 error uh, with Docker Hub. Great. Thank you very much, Bruno. Sorry, I kind of like glossed over that. Um, didn't register no, my okay. vision <laughs> for some reason. But um, yeah, no, thank you very much for kind of explaining and, and sharing the work that's being done on that. That's really great to know. Thank you. Let me just fix that. Cool. All right. Um, anything else on the LTS or weekly release or any of the work being done on that side, Bruno? Or is that... No, I've done okay. this time. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Uh, so uh, next up on the agenda. So uh, the next LTS baseline has been uh, started as discussion in the developer mailing list. We're looking at 2.452. Uh, the last handful of releases have been good. Weekly releases have been good without any kind of reporting from the community that there are serious issues. So really uh, any of them would have been an all right choice, but 2.452 happens to be uh, the latest good version that's working, uh, has a lot of good changes and includes anything else that was done up to that point. So um, it does look like a reasonable uh, uh, choice for the next baseline. Um, so 2.452.1 uh, does need a release lead and checklist at this point. Um, so hopefully we'll have some uh, idea of what who that might be in the next couple of weeks. Um, the RC is scheduled for release on May 1st. So uh, that is something we need to get moving on now as opposed to later. Uh, next up in the agenda. So uh, just last week, Chris Stern, or two weeks ago now, Chris Stern uh, posted a blog post explaining that the uh, Google Summer of Code application period has closed. Uh, Gonna update that link so it's the actual blog because we have a nice blog post for right here uh, explaining just like the application period is concluded uh, that we're now in the grading period 
that the org admins and mentors are going through and reviewing the submissions. We have over 70, uh, so lots to go through and filter through and make sure they are um, legitimate proposals. Uh, and so the grading will happen. Um, tomorrow is the complete, the uh, expected end date or completion date for the grading. So everything needs to be taken yep. care of by then. Uh, and then Google will announce their selections on May 1st. And then uh, Alyssa is out of office right now, but she'll be back in time to help submit things to Google. So everything's going to work out uh, okay in that sense. Uh, Bruno, yeah. you look a little less certain yeah, about she that. Yeah, should What's be up? back. Alyssa should be back next Monday. So we'll have a few meetings between admins and mentors next week to iron out the gradings. You know, if ever there were some big discrepancies between um, notations between marks for the same subject and so on. So we'll choose all the uh, proposal that we'll submit to Google and then Google will do its magic within the black box and let us know how many projects and which progress projects they will allow us to uh, work with this year. So end of gradings tomorrow, uh, meetings next week and at the beginning of May, we will know more about the project that will be selected in the end. Beautiful. And I'm sure that once we actually have more clarification from Google, we'll have more uh, more communication, either a blog post or some other of form course. of announcement for everything. Um, we'll announce the projects that did get accepted. There will be a lot of communication coming in the next few weeks for Google Summer of Code, for sure. Yes, indeed. Great. Thank you very much, Bruno. Appreciate the insight. Uh, next up, the version docs project. So again, the work is continuing here. Uh, Chris and Vandy Singh have been working on the Gatsby side uh, for site generation. Um, I've been going through the actual the version doc site as it stands now, reviewing the different sections. I just got through uh, the pipeline and managing or using Jenkins, so uh, slowly but surely making my way through there. Uh, the infra team had to focus on Azure and cloud cost saving measures. Uh, so they've been working diligently on that. Uh, they're in the process of getting some things uh, put in place that will help reduce the costs for sure. Uh, there still needs to be some work done there, but uh, once they are, once they have the cloud costs under control, uh, we'll be putting the version site back onto a priority for them to look at. Um, there still needs to be some work done in the infra to make sure that that will be published and pushed uh, properly. So uh, more to come on that. But um, things are coming along well there. The version doc site looks really good. Uh, and it's, you know, making sure that the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted, making sure things like security advisories are not interrupted or uh, that there's no issues in getting those generated, making sure things like the change log, the download page, other areas that are generated or are that, um, that might need some help in rendering, just making sure that everything is good to go. Um, and so thanks to Vandi and Chris for their all their work on that. Um, and for anyone joining us newly, this is the result of Google Summer of Code 2023 project coming to uh, full, coming full circle and getting kind of uh, hitting the last steps before we uh, finish it up. Uh, next up on the agenda, the contributor spotlight. So we published Hervé Lemire's spotlight last week. Um, took a little time to get the tweet and the LinkedIn post out, but we did get it out for Hervé. Um, thanks to Hervé for his uh, collaboration and willingness to work with me on that. Uh, and really great to see uh, Hervé's kind of perspective as um, someone that was not necessarily familiar with Jenkins prior to joining in the sense of uh, Jenkins core. Uh, Hervé's familiarity with Jenkins came in the form of Jenkins X initially. So uh, he had a different journey than some others might've had to the project, which is really interesting. And uh, just a great story, great uh, perspective and just really nice to see that uh, his his background and his, his uh, journey to Jenkins, so to speak. Uh, and then Mark Waite will be next up. I'm working on his now and I'll be submitting it for uh, review as a pull request to the repository, um, either at the end of today or tomorrow. Um, we have, I have a couple other things to take care of for CDCon 2024 and the awards, but we'll get to that point. Uh, next up is the technical review and validation. Um, so this is something we've, we've been discussing the last couple weeks. Uh, I'm, uh, as a, contributor and the docs officer. I, my focus is documentation. Uh, my skill set's a little lacking for some of the uh, more development or technical heavy 
aspects of contributions and pull requests that are coming in. So uh, I wanted to find a way to make sure that we could get uh, consistent and reliable validation and, and review for the technical aspects of any content coming into Jenkins.io. Uh, so uh, I worked with Mark, we just talked with others, Bruno, Chris Stern, uh, Meg McRobert, Meg McRoberts, uh, you know, we're, we've expanded the copy editors team in Jenkins.io, uh, in the GitHub re repo for Jenkins.io, uh, so that there are more folks there for review so that uh, I can do my due diligence on reviewing documentation and any pull requests that come through. And if there are any, if there's any content that I don't feel uh, fully certain about, or if there's anything that I'm just unable to uh, process through instructions that might be a little bit beyond my skill set at this point in time, something like that, uh, I can tag and reach out for further review and help with that sort of thing. Um, so it's been going really well. We've had a couple of submissions from contributors to the developer docs that I've been able to tag the team with and gotten further contributions and review from others. Um, so, so far, so well, it's growing, uh, you know, exactly as we'd hoped. Uh, and so hopefully this just continues on from there and that we have uh, a little bit something more concrete or something more established that we can kind of point to and potentially even add to the style guide or contributing guide for Jenkins. Um, time will tell, but yeah, things are going well there. And I appreciate all the assistance that people are offering and helping uh, with these pull requests. Uh, next up is the documenting pipeline libraries with Markdown or plain text or HTML. So uh, the long and short of it is this is something that Marcus Winter proposed to support Markdown uh, for the pipeline library documentation. Um, HTML is just not good. It's not uh, the best experience for anyone to have. And the Markdown makes this process a lot easier and a lot more user-friendly in terms of just getting it done. Uh, Mark's already converted uh, his branch of pipeline library to use Markdown. He's reported good experiences, uh, no issues, nothing that is any kind of uh, detriment to the experience or what he's doing. So that's really encouraging. Uh, the biggest thing is that if this is something we want to implement into Jenkins pro uh, proper, uh, it would need to uh, have the Markdown Formatter plugin installed on the Jenkins controller, uh, but that also means that it would need to be installed on ci.jenkins.io. Uh, so this is not something we could just implement because it seems like it's a good idea. So Mark has created a help desk ticket for this so that we can have that discussion and have further insights being shared. Uh, Mark re recounts the steps of how to get this all squared away and how to set it up and the expectations for it. Um, so thanks to Mark for that work there. Uh, but we do need some security reviews and uh, potentially more discussion if anyone feels strongly about it in one way, shape or form. Um, some more to come on that, but uh, the discussion is happening. Uh, the The trail has been started, so uh, we just need more eyes and uh, some uh, feedback on that. Next up is CDCon 2024 just wrapped up in Seattle yesterday. Um, so thanks to everyone for attending. Thanks to everyone for participating. Um, we all, there was also the announcement of the CDF community and uh, community awards that includes uh, Jenkins as a graduated project has three awards of their own uh, most valuable um, contributor, most valuable advocate and security MVP are the three Jenkins specific awards. Uh, and so the winners uh, of those, uh, so uh, security MVP uh, was Yaniv who helped with some vulnerabilities that uh, were reported to the Jenkins security team back in November last year. Uh, the advocate was Darren Pope, who helps with the What's New in LTS. Uh, lots of video recordings for uh, different ways to use Jenkins and, and tutorial videos that are on the CloudBees YouTube channel. Uh, and contributor, uh, the most valuable contributor this year was Stefan Speaker. Um, Stefan was recently highlighted in the contributor spotlight, uh, so you can get a great idea of his background and the work that he does in Jenkins and what kind of inspires him there. Um, but beyond all that, just the work he, he does in helping make sure that Jenkins is uh, reliable and, and performing as well as it can uh, are invaluable and felt by the users, uh, whether they know it or not. Um, and so we're going to have a blog post to announce all of that. Uh, and additionally, uh, CDF, so CD, the CD Foundation has their overall community awards, uh, and then graduated projects have their their own separate awards within this. Um, one of the awards that 
the CD Foundation uh, well gives out is a continuous enthusiast. Uh, and this year, Alyssa Tong won that one. So Alyssa is the uh, CDF Continuous Enthusiast Award winner. So congrats to her and uh, all the winners of the awards. Again, uh, I'm putting together a blog post that will share all that information and be sent out uh, again, either today or tomorrow, uh, most likely tomorrow if uh, if we don't, if I don't get it uh, reviewed in time for today, but um, it's not anything crazy, so it shouldn't be too, too bad. Uh, but one way or the other in the next 24 hours, we'll have a blog post announcing all the, all the award winners for Jenkins and CDF. And then finally, uh, so this is a topic that I want to start a discussion about right now. Um, we're not necessarily looking to do any of this stuff right this moment because this is gonna take some time, um, but eventually Blue Ocean, I mean, the deprecation of Blue Ocean has been a conversation for some time now in the Jenkins project. Uh, and you know we're getting closer and closer to that point of deprecating it properly. Um, so that's gonna involve a lot of different tasks and responsibilities but in this case specifically, uh, I want to think about what kind of documentation tasks are going to be required for that. Um, there is a whole section for Blue Ocean documentation in the Jenkins user handbook. So we have to determine whether or that's going to stick around, whether that's going to be redirected to something else, or whether it will be replaced if uh, with uh, something like the uh, pipeline graph view, which is uh, the best alternative solution that we've been uh, kind of championing and talking about since um, it's become a real real viable option. So um, we could potentially look at extending that documentation further if there's uh, input from, uh, I, I wanna say, is it Tim Jacome that uh, owns that plugin? Bruno, do you remember? I think so. He's not the only one, but I think that's a major uh, contributor as far as I know. Yeah, and yeah, now I can't remember if he's the owner, but I know he, Tim works on it quite a bit and has yeah. been uh, I, at Fostum especially. There was talk about the pipeline graph view, and um, mm -hmm. Tim was pretty much um, the the voice for it. So um, Tim's done a lot of work with that, uh, but the pipeline graph view is the alternative that is really kind of being touted as the next uh, the next option. So. Uh, maybe there's enough there that we can extend that documentation. Maybe there's some more that uh, isn't necessarily documented just yet. I know there's been a lot of work being done on that, a lot of new contributors to that plugin and making sure that it uh, has these features and that these features work. So um, there could just there might just be untapped documentation for it that we can uh, bring to the Jenkins.io, the user handbook. So. Um, that's something that I was considering. Uh, and then what to do with the Blue Ocean documentation? Do we move it? Do we keep it? Do we have it um, you know, stored away as like a, as a breaking case of emergency sort of thing? Um, and then thinking about it, um, the last side of my hat on the last note that I had here uh, was, you know, with the eventual version documentation site, is that going to be an issue to include the Blue Ocean documentation if we make sure that it's stuck to an older version? Um, because if it's not available to even utilize, it's not necessarily like that might cause issues where it's still available documentation wise and it's causing a weird expectation um, or creating an inappropriate expectation that it still can be used when it shouldn't be. Um, so there's there's a lot of moving pieces to it that I'm uh, I'm not 100 percent sure of all of them yet. So um, yeah, I've, uh, I've done enough. I've, I've done a good amount of like bringing this up and and showcasing the idea. Um, Bruno, do you have any ideas like off the top of your head? Anything that um, comes to mind in terms of like what we need to look out for, or what we can uh, best do with this? Sort of? <laughs> oh, well, I don't really know, but the thing is we have quite a few tutorials and pages of documentation that are linked to Blue Ocean. I'm thinking of tutorials, for example, that we, we wrote a few weeks or months ago. So naturally, I got rid of the Blue Ocean references and replaced them with um, Pipeline Graph View because that was almost... Um, an easy replacement you know they were doing kind of the same thing i know there are more 
uh, things that um, Blue Ocean can do than Open Graph View, but for basic usage like mines, that's okay. So I think that each time we will review or revamp an existing tutorial or part of documentation, of course, we should get rid of Blue Ocean and replace it whenever it's possible with the pipeline graph view. As for um, moving the whole uh, Blue Ocean documentation, yes, I would say that kind of brutal, <laughs> but why not? We've been warning everybody on each and every channel we have that you should not use Blue Ocean anymore. So maybe you should do something kind of, yes, harsh or whatever, but just say that the Jenkins community does not support the use of Blue Ocean anymore. Even if it's, yes, it's written that the status, it won't receive, uh, receive sorry, a further functionality updates, but it still gets updates. Uh, right. I don't know if it's security wise or bug fixes or so, but I know that on my instances, I have some updates uh, from time to time. So it's not dead yet, but you should get rid of that. Uh, the problem is a lot of people still need it. Uh, for example, even the infra uh, still needs it. So for the people accustomed to uh, using that, uh, they know how this works and they know that will still work for them uh, until a few months from now. So, but for the new users, definitely we should get rid of that. So the, sorry, I'm being pretty long and verbose, but the thing is, I think that's a good idea to get rid uh, of the section in the Jenkins IO website about Blue Ocean uh, plugin itself. And we'll see what we can do to help new user. Of course, Pipeline Graph View doesn't have any documentation as far as I know, or maybe just a few lines on the plugin web page. So that won't help users, but yeah, my vote is for getting rid of the uh, Blue Ocean plugin documentation in the whole website. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense, Bruno. Thank you. Thank you so much for just sharing all that and providing the insight and that um, kind of like your experience with it. Uh, I bought, I pulled up the use status note just yeah. because I think this might be the easiest way to start the process at the, at the very least is changing the status note saying, hey, it's not going to receive any further updates, but it's also going to be deprecated at, you know, this point in the future, whatever that might be. Um, not something that's going to happen right now or in the next day or two, but um, when we decide to, that might be like the easiest start of the transition. Um, but I, yeah, the pipeline graph view doesn't have a ton of documentation and mm -hmm. that's where I was kind of thinking maybe we can expand it. Um, it might be something that I can work with Tim Jacome on getting a better idea or kind of um, seeing how we can expand on some of the topics that he, he like that he's worked on and stuff with this. So, hmm. yeah. But um, yeah, uh, again, this is all stuff that uh, I want to start at least can start considering and talking about and having this discussion so that it's a not a surprise when it does happen. Uh, and B, so that it's, you know, this is a community driven effort. Um, this would affect the community as a whole. So it makes sense that everyone has some kind of uh, voice in this if they feel so strongly. Yeah. Do you have any idea of when the version of the website would be live? Uh, a few months from now, by the end of the year, earlier than that? So I know that the cost saving measures mm. and things going on for the infra team they're hoping to have that resolved or at least under control by the end of this month so um mm. after that the the goal so the goal is that's taken care of costs are under control for the cloud costs once they're under control this can the version doc site can kind of come back into the prioritization list and then be prioritized and uh, implemented at some point in the near future i would assume or Based on how everything is going, I would say sometime in the next few months. I wouldn't say it's going to be close to the end of the year or anything like that. I, I would imagine before the end of summer, um, we can get this implemented. But uh, I don't know that that would coincide with this blue ocean deprecation and removal and all that. I think that would be a totally separate um, aspect okay. of it. But Because I was thinking uh, if ever we had the new website, the version documentation website live, 
maybe we could attach the very last version of the Blue Ocean documentation to the last LTS. And then on the next LTS, just get rid of that uh, Blue Ocean documentation. But that's maybe not a good idea. Well, so that's actually, so that's kind of like touching on what I had thought. Um, mm -hmm. What I was thinking, Bruno, is is if we have, because the way the version doc site right now is set up uh, is everything has latest. And then if they have an older version, they have an older version, you can choose to go to that version of the documentation. If we make sure that Blue Ocean is not part of whatever latest is, and latest is the default view for the documentation, that's where I was thinking maybe that resolves the problem for us. We don't have to yeah. totally delete the documentation because I know that can cause issues, um, but we don't have to show it as far as like what the general usage of Jenkins.io would be necessarily because we're looking at, you know, it's default is latest. It's default isn't 2.426.3 where Blue Ocean was still very present, for instance. Yeah. So, um so like that, and I, so I, I think, is that what you're kind of getting at with yep. what you were talking about? Yeah. So we're yes. on the same page that, which is great. Um, that, because like that, um, one of the recent pull requests that's come through for developer documentation was talking about the idea of the old wiki migration. Um, and one of the top, one of the items that was uh, discussed is the fact that um, we don't want to delete the content. We want it to be there, but we want it to point to the right content. Uh, so the redirect being configured, stuff like that. Um, I'm, I, I'm hesitant to just like remove remove things uh, just because of that. But um, if we're going to deprecate it, if it's not going to be an option, if it's not going to be something you can even really use anymore, it doesn't make sense to keep it up with the latest version. So yeah, having it be on an older version of the documentation might be a good solution in the end, in the long run. But yeah. Things mm -hmm. we'll figure out. Got it. Uh, I haven't done my homework, but uh, do you know if we have a section of the documentation that talks about uh, the Blue Ocean containers? Because the for the containers, it's even worse because they are so outdated that they may even be considered dangerous. Mm. Yeah, I don't know that it talks specifically about cont the containers, but... That's a good thing. Uh, Better not talk about that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it does go into mm. the like the Docker Hub and stuff like that, uh, but it's got the updated... It's got the correct... Um... Yeah, yeah, Jenkins, Jenkins. So, so... yeah, of course, uh, for people joining at this point of the video, it's better to install the Jenkins LTS and then on top of that install the Blue Ocean plugin if you ever need that, but you will be better with um, the pipeline graph view anyway. Instead of starting from a now dated specific container already having um, the Blue Ocean plugin inside. That's not a good idea, not at all. No, thank, thank you for the clarification and the reminder on that, Bruno. That helps a lot. Maybe. <laughs> if it helps one person, it helps a lot, so. It's okay. It only takes one. Uh, that covers the agenda that I had for today. We'll continue the discussion about Blue Ocean and what we can look for on that uh, going forward. Um, that'll be a constant topic from here on out until we actually get to that point where it's deprecated. So, uh, yeah. Any thoughts, any ideas that come up between now and our next meeting, feel free to share. Um, lastly, as a housekeeping note, so Mark didn't show up today, and I don't believe that the uh, later office hours or yeah, the later office hours is not on the calendar. Um, so Asia docs office hours for the, uh, 19th will not be held this evening or later today. Um, just as a piece of housekeeping, I think it'll be back the week after. Um, but yeah, Mark is, uh, unavailable today for that later on. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's all. Just wanted to put that out there and make sure. All right, cool. All right, well, 
that covers everything in that case. So then I will go ahead and stop the recording. It'll be available in 24 to 48 hours as usual. And it'll get posted on the community discourse site. And until next time, take care, stay safe, uh, and we'll see you then. Bye now. Thank you. Bye-bye.